every morning, morning new every morning. Great, great is our faith. Fullness, all oh, Hallelujah, great is our faith. And me, me more in the name of Jesus. Me, me more. What's all made in the name of Jesus? And me, me more. And me, me more. And me, me more in the name of For the gift of life, thank you for your health and strength. Thank you for delivering you from the power of darkness and the physical and spiritual. He is faithful, God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We lift up your name higher, Lord. You are worthy to be praised, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You are great. You are great. You are worthy to be praised. Jesus, you are great. Father, you are great. You are great. You are worthy to be prayed. Jesus, you are great. Oh, Father, you are great. Holy Ghost, you are worthy to be prayed. Jesus, you are great. Father, you are great. Jesus, you are worthy to be prayed. King of kings, Lord of love. You are worthy to be Jesus, you are hey, Father, you are great Oh Lord, you are worthy to be King of kings Lord of lords Prince of peace You are worthy to be Rock of the king Son of Judah I said of peace You are worthy to be Rock of the Lion of Judah, King of glory, you are worthy to King of God, you are great, you are great, you are worthy to be. You rule by power, you reign in glory, manifesting fire, you are worthy to be. Oh Jesus, you are great, Father. To be, you rule by power, you reign in glory, manifest by fire. You are worthy, you are, you are, you are, you are great, you are, you are great, you are great, you are great, you are great. You rule by power, you reign in glory, manifest in fire. You are worthy, worthy. Jesus Christ, you are. Great. Love 
And that is your name. You are Messiah, Jehovah, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Elohim, El Shaddai, Almighty God, King of Glory, we worship you. For your love and faithfulness, we thank you. For your goodness and mercy, we appreciate you, Lord. We thank you for the gift of life, Father. We thank you for your spirit that made us and your breath that gave us life. We thank you, Lord. We appreciate everything you have done for us. We have not taken your love and grace and mercy for granted. You are great indeed, O Lord. We glorify your name because you are faithful. Let your name be glorified. Have your way today, O Lord, in this world. Take absolute control, Father, more than ever, more than you have ever done. Let your name be glorified. Let all people know today that Jesus Christ of old is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. I command by the power in the name of Jesus. Let every enemies of the cross. Every demons and forces of darkness. Every power that misinterpret the word of God. Every power that mistranslate the word of God. Every power that rob people of the word of truth. Every power that steal the word from men and women. I command them to go into hiding now. By the power in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Lord. Amen. Glorify your name today and let your will be done. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, let every doors and gates to every soul be open. Amen. That the word of God may come in to transform and to change life. And to glorify God in our mortal and spiritual body. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let's take the aim quickly. Yeah. Have you counted the course? La 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 la
you can't say the cause, though your soul should be lost, though you get a award for your own. Even now it may be that the line you have crossed, have you counted? Have you counted the cause? Three girls. Why the door of the is open to you and the death of his love you exalt won't you come and be healed won't you whisper I do I have counted I have counted the cause have you counted the cause then your soul should be lost for you get the Even now it may be that the line you have crossed. Have you counted? Have you counted the cost? Have you counted? Have you counted the cost? Though your soul should be lost, that you get the whole one for your own. Even now it may be that the line you have crossed. Have you counted? 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 Look at that one. One says, There is a line that is drawn by rejecting the Lord, where the call of His Spirit is lost. And you hurry along with the pleasures, mad throng. You have counted, have you counted the cause? Two says, You may batter your hope or eternity's mourn for a moment of joy at the, at the most, for the glitter of sin. And the things it will win. Have you counted the cost? Number two. You may batter your hope at the time it is more for the moment of joy and amour. For the guilt of sin and the things it will win. Have you counted? Have you counted? Number three says, Why the door of his mercy is open to you, and the depth of his love you exhaust. Won't you come and be healed? Won't you whisper, I yield, I want to be saved. I have counted, I have counted the cause. Why the door of his mercy is open to you, and the depth of Love you exalt, exalt. Won't you come and be here? Oh, won't, won't you whisper? I you? I have counted. I have counted. Have you counted? Have you counted the cost? Is your soul should be lost? Will you get the whole world for your own? Even now it may be that the line you have crossed Have you counted? Have you counted? Look at that, that chorus closely. The chorus says, Have you counted the cost? If your soul should be lost, though you gain the whole world for your own, even now it may be that the line you have drawn, you have crossed, have you counted? Have you counted the cost of losing your soul to hellfire after this war? What can you give in exchange of your soul?
What would you say if the rapture takes place right now as I'm speaking and you are left behind? What are you going to say if you are dead, your eyes closed in death, and you do not make it to heaven? Have you counted the cost of being in hell? Have you estimated how painful hell can be for eternity? Let's sing the chorus one more time. Have you counted the cost if your soul should be lost? No, you say that, oh, what for your own? Your own, even now it may be that the line you have crossed. Have you counted? Have you counted? Heavenly Father, we give you glory because you are faithful. We thank you for you are Alpha and Omega. We thank you for the grace of salvation. We thank you for the mercy to see you in the hand. We thank you for your faithfulness and kindness. We thank you, Lord, for removing our names from the book of sin and sinners. We thank you for writing our names in the book of life. We appreciate you, Father, for your love and affection. We thank you for the forgiveness of all sins. We thank you for the cleansing of all sins. We thank you, Lord, for your love and affection. We give you glory because you are faithful. And I decree today in the name of Jesus, every satanic condemnation, every demonic petition, every witchcraft accusation, and all evil charges against you, I command them to be raised with the blood of Jesus today. Amen. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. Father, have your way today. Let your name be glorified. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 So we are going to continue or conclude to say the message that we started last week. If we have time to finish it today. And if you remember the title, I want everybody to shout the title. One, two, go. The old child in the new church. And some people have forgotten. I remember. Can we shout it again? The old altar in the new church. church. The old altar in the new church. church. And the last week we told us that the altar is a, is a special table where ordin- in the church where ordinances and it's a special table in the church where ordinances and sacrifices of the church are being made. A special place in the church. The altar is a special place in the church where ordinances and sacrifices of the church are made. So we told us the meaning of this title is that you are the church of God. Like we always say, we have been saying since January. You are the church of God. And therefore, if you transfer the old altar and bring it to the new church, you are a new life. You are a new creation. All things are pass away and all have become new if indeed you are born again. If indeed you have confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, all things should be gone and all new should begin to manifest. Then if you, the problem now is, if you, after confessing Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you keep the old altar in the new church, then there will be a problem. If the old altar is transferred into the new church, there will be what? There will be a problem. So the old church, old altar should be destroyed with the old church, with the old body. When you transfer, when you bring, you be, let the Lord Jesus Christ mold for you, build for you a pure and clean altar in your new church. But today we are speaking, we are continuing from the message, the old altar in the new church. Say it to somebody beside you. The old altar in the new church. I can hear you very well. The old, the old altar, altar in the new church. I cannot hear people online. The, oh. On the WhatsApp, on the YouTube, wherever you are. The old altar in the new church. Amen. 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 Glory be to God in the highest. Amen. 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 We read in the book of Acts of Apostles last week. Acts chapter 8 verse 9 to, 9 to 22. Acts 8, 922, we read last week. We read about a man there called what? Simon the Sorcerer. Simon the Sorcerer. We saw the man brought the whole altar into what? Into new church. He brought the whole altar into what? The new church. And verse 21, can you read again, my brother? Verse 21 and 22. That's the only one we will remind us about. I will move on quickly so that we can finish it today. Yes? 
Acts 8, 21 and 22. Yes. You have neither part nor portion in this matter. You have neither part nor portion in this matter. For your heart is not right in the sight of God. For your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this your wickedness. You see that? The, set, the heart, when your heart is not right in the gospel, which means you have not gotten the gospel right. Now, when we talk about that, I, I had some of us when we we're answering questions and, uh, in, the, in the Sunday school, uh, somebody mentioned when you don't get the gospel right. Some people don't understand that. Some people get angry when you say that. How can you say somebody did not get gospel right? Believe me, it is true. Some people don't get gospel right. Some people have even become pastor without God getting the gospel right. Some people have become general overseer of ministry without getting the gospel right. It can happen. It happened to the people before us. And that's the reason why they, they, they will have many churches in the world. Because, and the churches in the world are preaching and treating different things. And we were not doing like the apostles preaching the same thing. Because we got gospel, on, we understand gospel differently. And if you understand it differently, that means you didn't get it right. Because if we all got it right, then we should be what? We should be on the same page. We should be on the same page. page. So, Peter told him, what did he tell him again? Read again, 22, 21 and 22. You have neither part nor portion in this matter. He told him, he said, Peter said, you don't have part or portion in this matter of the Holy Spirit. Yes? For your heart is not right in the sight of God. Because your heart is not right in the sight of God. That is why the Bible always tells us that the Holy Spirit is given to those who have done what? Who have received the gospel. So if you are wondering why you don't receive the Holy Ghost, then your right must be right before you can receive the Holy Ghost. It is gi- the, uh, he is given to those who I've received the gospel rightly. Amen. Amen. But unfortunately, nowadays we get the Holy Ghost in many ways. We get it by crook and by creed. If it does not come from God, we get it anyhow. A young man was, was speaking on the YouTube one day, and I, I was watching, I was watching him. He said they organized in a ministry, I don't want to mention him. They organized the Holy Ghost baptism. He got there. He said he saw some people sp- speaking in tongues. And some other, even some of his, some of his friends that they sing together, they were now speaking in tongues again. It's not that they just preach salvation, they ministered the Holy Ghost, and this boy was speaking in tongues. And he was wondering why he didn't speak in tongues. So after the service, he went to his friend. He said, I saw you speaking in tongues, did you receive the Holy Ghost? He said, where? Well, I didn't receive anything. I was just forming something, so that I would not be the only one left. He said, I was just speaking something. He said, what are you speaking? And, they, and he told him, I forgot what he told him. He just, I just make some combination. Of word, I just began to speak because I, I saw some of the sisters and brothers speaking in tongues. So these are the ways some people and some people actually deceive themselves into growing in the gospel in this way. There's some people actually grow in the gospel in that way. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So let's move on quickly. We read in memory verse. We read memory verse from the book of Matthew chapter 9, verse 14 and 17. Can you read that again? Matthew 9, 14 to 17. Our memory uh, uh, verse. Matthew 9, 14 to 17. Then the disciples of John came to him saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, Can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom when, when the bridegroom will be taken away from from them, and then they will fast. Amen. Amen. You see that they t- came to Jesus. Your your disciples don't fast. It is customary in the law of Moses that we have a period that we fast, but they don't fast. Now Jesus was telling them in response to that, why would somebody that does not understand the reason of fasting fast? That's what they mean by that answer. These people don't understand the reason why they have to fast. They don't understand what, how, what fasting is all about. Then, they just because some people think fasting is just to bribe God into doing something for you. We are not speaking about fasting. Sometimes we are going to deal with fasting. The meaning of fasting and how do we fast? Many people think fasting is just meant to, if something is difficult, then I have to go into fasting to crack it. it it's okay. But the reason why God answers prayers when you fast is because you are fasting, you are you are living in the right attitude which God wants you to live during that time. 
Because when you fast, you see that you don't talk anyhow. You don't do whatever you want to do. You don't fight. You keep yourself clean and holy. That is the reason why God listened to you. And that is showing you that that is the way I want you to live always. I don't want you to just do that in three days and walk away, do another thing in another 27 days. So, you must understand. What he was telling them is that you cannot bring the whole altar into the what? Into the new church. The old attitude of the Pharisee and Sadducee about fasting, we don't want my own disciples to begin to do that. So, we, they must understand what gospel is all about. And I must let them know the reason for fasting and how to fast. Then before they begin to do, to do that. Amen. Amen. Golden verse. We also saw golden verse last week. Uh, Colossians 3, 5 to 10. Colossians 3, 5 to 10. Colossians 3, 5 to 10. Yes. Therefore, Therefore, put to death your members which are in, on the earth. Put to death your members, the members of your body that are on earth. Fornication. Fornication. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. Passion. Passion. Evil desire. Evil desire. And covetousness. Covetousness. Which is idolatry. Which is idolatry. Because of these things, the Be- wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. Because of all these things, the wrath of God is coming upon those who disobey. In which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. In which you were once walking before. But now you yourselves are to put off all these. Now, if you are in the new church, you were walking in that before. That is what verse 6 says. Eh? Uh, No, verse 7 says, In which you were once walking. You were once walking in sin. Now, look at what verse 7, 7, uh, 8 says. But now, you yourself are to put off all this anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language, and out of your mouth. These are the things you already repented from. He says, therefore, in the new church, there is a need to remove those old altars. If those old altars are now removed from the new church, then they corrupt and ruin the new church and make it become like old again. Then, someone that is saved now begins to need to be saved again and again and again. And until they come to consolation to of some people that will say, don't worry, you can't deliver yourself. You have been saved once. Why do you have to repent again and again and again? You are saved by grace. You have to have faith that you are, you are not a sinner. People speak a word of consolation to sinners. So just have in your mind that you are not a sinner. Proclaim that. I'm not a sinner. Proclaim me. I'm not a sinner. I'm a child of God. Proclaim that. Then you go to fornicate. You go to adultery. You drink beer. Say, I'm not a sinner. I am saved by grace and not by works. It's not about what I do, but because I have confessed Christ Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior for my mouth, even if I drink, fornicate, commit adultery, I am saved. That is a lie. That is a message of consolation from the devil. To send people to hellfire. When you are saved, you are saved. You don't need safety again. Somebody that is drowning in the water and another person comes to remove them from the water. They are saved, isn't it? But if they jump back into it, are they saved? Eh? No. That would be they were once saved, isn't it? That's the language you use. He was once saved because he was removed, then he jumped into it again. Then he's no longer saved. That is what salvation is all about. The simple language that the apostle preached was, salvation is to deliver us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, the kingdom of God. So if you proclaim Jesus from your mouth and then you remain living in sin, you are not saved from that damnation. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, for those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's a promise. For those who call upon him for safety, then he come to deliver them. If he has come to deliver you because you call upon him, then you jump into it yourself. What are you doing? You are saying that you don't need safety. You want to die. So we must understand what gospel means. It's very simple. Don't get yourself confused. Don't make it complicated. And don't let people deceive you to go to hell. A spade is called a spade. Salvation is called salvation. There's no in between. You can't sit on the fence. It's either you are saved or you are in sin. It's either you are delivered from hell or you are 
in the kingdom of God. You cannot be in between. You must be wise not to be deceived. Be wise. Don't let anybody deceive you to go to hell. Because one day you will be alone. Nobody will be around you. Friends, relatives, father, mother, husband, wife will not be around you. You will be alone. Pastor, bishop, those that preach those gospel to you, they will not be around you. You will be alone. Then some of us will be saying, I will not be there in Jesus' name. And I don't want you to be among those people. Some people will be saying, oh, if I had known. This is what I would, oh, I was deceived. Oh, I was deceived. It is better to overdo than to be de- deceived. Amen. Amen. Don't be deceived. Amen. Christ is not mocked. Whatever a man sowed, shall he reap? Whatever you sow into your life, that's what you get out of it. You sow to righteousness and holiness, you reap the kingdom of God. You sow to sin, you reap hell. It's, there's no in between. And the last week also, we told us some of the old, identify some of the old altars that want to live in the new church. Number one, we talk about the altar of adultery, adultery from the earth. Now, before you committed adultery, but now you don't commit it physically anymore. You now commit it in the heart. That is that altar of adultery is hiding in your new church. That altar is now hiding in your new church. And if you are not careful, they are able to manifest again. They are able to manifest again. Because something you think consistently, something that occupies your spirit, your soul every time, is able to manifest in your action. Is able to, it will manifest in such a way that you never expected. Have you ever seen some people come and say, My God, what is this? How did I get this way? What is that? Sister, can you explain to me what just happened to me? Now tell me what I what did I just do with you? Is it, is it man of God, you just kiss me? Say, Oh my god, oh god. <laughs> that thing happened because it first of all incubated, it was first of all incubated in the spirit of the man of God for long. Then he forced himself out. Then it to disgrace the new church, to embarrass the new church, to humiliate the new church, to frustrate the new church, to confuse the new church, to debase the new church, and to send the new church to backsliding and possibly hellfire. We read from the book of Matthew 5, 27 to 28. We won't have time to read that. But my time is running now. I need to finish today. And we also saw the, the altar of, the old altar of pride or arrogance from the heart. We read from the book of Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 3. We also saw somebody that is no longer physically arrogant, but is arrogant in the spirit. In your soul, when something is happening, you're thinking, why would they address me like that? In your mind. You are not saying it out. Because before you used to say it out when you were in the world. But now it is incubated. You see. Now you don't say it out. You just think about it. Why would they say that to me? Don't you know my age? You know my age and you're speaking like that. You don't respect me. Then you are not saying it. You are now thinking it. Then it is not gone. One day it will be forced out. What? You're not saying, shut up your mouth. Don't you know me? I'm Dr. Reverend Samuel Joel. The apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sanctified, purified by the blood of Jesus. Filled with the Holy Ghost with anointing that can kill and destroy. Some people talk like that. Because it is false being, they didn't send it out when they got born again. And that was hiding as the whole altar in their new church. One day, it will bust out like that. It will bust out like that. The altar of idolatry from the heart. The altar of what? Idolatry Idolatry from the heart. You are no longer going to the shrine. You no longer buy goat and chicken to go and give a list. You see? They no longer give you powder or water to bath or to, to leak from the abalist. You are now a born again Christian. You are, when, the, when the pastor pray for you, you say, Pastor, you don't have any anointing or water. Because for you, that is what abalist used to give you. If they don't give you anointing or water, you are not believing that you have received any miracle. And therefore, you see, problem is not going. Because you have not removed altar. I, I know that we also pray into water. We believe in it. We believe in praying to, 
to oil as a point of contact for prayers. But that does not mean God cannot walk if you are not given. You must have faith in God that all is possible with or without any water or oil. Your faith must not build around water and oil or whatever a pastor gives unto you. Because you were once idol later does not mean that you have to expect something to be given to you before you expect miracle to happen. Say, Pastor, can't you bro- roll Psalm 16 into the, into the paper and give me so that I can put it in the pocket? You now go and tear Psalm 16 in the Bible and uh, roll, wrap it uh, 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 like uh, the Muslim used to do their, their Quran. Uh, and they wrap it, they wrap the Quran, some part of the Quran, uh, 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 or Hadith, and put it, wrap it with something and put it in your pocket. That is not the practice of the New Testament salvation. You don't have to continue to build your trust and your faith on physical contact before you receive your miracle. You are no longer an idolater. And again, you must not love anything more than God. We told us last week. Don't love anything more than God. It is good you, are, you want to go to school. It is good you want to be a footballer or a basketballer or whatever sport you want to do. You must love God higher than anything you want to be. I used to tell us some young people when they want to go and play their games and matches, they wake up very early preparing. But when they want a Sunday morning, they don't, they don't wake until you wake them. Then you are idolizing the thing that you do more than God. That is as simple as that. Which means God is not in your spirit. It's not in your heart. It's that thing you do that is in your heart more than God. Some people remember their working hours. You remember your working hours the day you are on shift. But when is a Bible study, some of us forget. Oh, pastor, it's today Bible study. I didn't remember. Do you know even some Christian in Europe here? I remember there was a time my wife was having uh, some conversation with it, I think with somebody. And the person said, oh, today is Sunday. I cannot, I cannot understand that. Somebody forget a Sunday service, a Sunday then they don't forget their programs. They don't forget their working appointment. They don't forget hospital appointment. They don't forget any appointment, but they forget appointment with Jesus, with God. May the Lord have mercy. That is idolatry in different version. You are no longer participating in the masquerade or festival of your father and mother. You are now born again. You are a Christian. Then you send money for Islamic festivals. I'm not saying that you, give, you can give anybody you want, whether they are born again or not, you can give them money, but it must not be given towards an idol and a festival that is not ordained by God. Or masquerade. Masquerade festival. We must be careful on what we do with our lives after salvation. We must not support what we have repented from. Outer of we saw also altar of lie from the heart. Acts chapter 5, verse 1 to 3. We read the idolatry, by the way. We read Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 1 to 4. We say the heart lie is also conceived from the from the heart. You plan it from the heart. We saw it in Ananiah and Sapphira. I move on quickly to the hatred from the heart. Hatred means feeling of discontent or dislike or to store somebody. I don't like this person. For just or for it could be for the right thing or something that is not right. You just don't like somebody. You just hate someone that God has created. For whatever reason that is best known to you. It comes from your heart and it's also an altar, whole altar that you have brought into the new church. As a new church of God, church of Christ, you are no longer supposed to be dwelling in that. And the other one that I wanted to say last week also is the altar of anger. This is a very dangerous one. The altar of what? Anger. The altar of anger. There was a complete message that the Lord, uh, 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 the Holy Spirit inspired me to preach about this uh, sometimes, at, I believe, uh, late last year. Uh, how many people remember the, the beautiful mad woman. woman? The beautiful mad woman. Altar of anger. It can transfer from the old to the new church. That is why you see when a minister of God gets angry publicly or a child of God born again, he just gets angry publicly and 
it brought disgrace and shame later. And they now begin to think when the matter is gone, when the situation is subsided, they begin to think, say, why did I behave like this? Look at the way I disgraced myself. Public anger. What's the meaning of this? It happened to people. It happened to Christians. It happened to ministers of God. Because the anger was repented from, but it did not depart from the chambers of the heart. Even though they are not physically angry, but they are Something is boiling in them once in a while. When, there's, when somebody does it, oh, I wish I was still a guy just, just to slap this person and go back. Or to show them that this is what I was made of. Or when you are the person that used to say, you never met me when I was somewhere, the real somewhere. I would have dealt with you, blue blood. I would have made sure that you are hospitalized. Then the thing is not going. But the day, anything that has not gone, and you kept there, and you are always thinking about it, you don't destroy it, I will speak more about it when I get to the final stage of how to take care of them. They will find their way one day to get out. When they get out of you, you will not be able to hold them back. How many people know what I'm talking about? You will display before you know that what is the meaning of this that I did. I am supposed to be a child of God. Where did this come from? This happened when you always think about them and you did not destroy them. You did not destroy them. Then we go from anger to greed. The altar of greed. Altar of greed and love of money. Altar of what? Greed and love of money. You were repented once from them. Then you can be in Christ and if you don't destroy the greed and love of money, you will find yourself in the serious mess one day. Or you will find yourself not in the will of God anymore. When you see that your thought about money is evil. Or is, is too lustful. Or you can do anything to make money. You think about how much you need money all the time. You think about what you could have. If you are not born again. What you could have gone to make this money at all the time. And those wicked ways of making money was always and constantly in your spirit. If you are not careful, you will make a terrible mistake. Can you believe that somebody can be a minister of God and still do money ritual? If they are not careful. If they maintain the love of money constantly, it can still happen. It can still happen. Some people say, no, how can somebody be a sincere, genuine Christian and do money ritual? It happens to people. It happens to people. Because they do it too much in passion. What, is, is there any difference between somebody that do money ritual and somebody that actually do ritual to grow the church? Is there a difference? There's no difference. It's still about love of money and fame. Doing rituals to grow church Doing rituals to multiply church, doing rituals for miracle and testimony or ring and handkerchief. Some people don't even call it ritual anymore. They call it talisma in India talisma. They, there's some people you write to them, they give you a, a ring or handkerchief, then you can be able to pray for anybody and they, they beautify it. Even they have the God to advertise it online. Ring for answers of prayer. Rings for handkerchief for answers of prayers. Then you, you buy it and then you lay hands on anybody or you use handkerchief to touch anybody and some people get, for, they go for them then they say it's not ritual. And after the end of everything the thing begins to act, cry for something. And you contact the people you bought it from. What do I do? I'm having this person. Okay, it's just a little thing to do. You're just asking for the, the blood of somebody in your church. Then you say, but you didn't tell me that. You told me that it's answer prayer. And miracle say, yeah, sometimes some of them can be very stubborn. Those happen because of love of money, love of fame, power, to be known at all costs, to have money at all costs. You can do anything that you are told to do as a Christian. Fraud, fraudulent practices, falsifying documents that you have repented from, but they still dwell in your heart. They have not gone. And if you are still at the, at the T-junction of problem, you still want to invite them because they have not left your spirit. Old altar in the new church. Old altar. And I, I also talk about, this is where I, I stopped last week. The love of, of the world. 
the love of the world. Say that to somebody. The love of the world. And we read already the book of 1 John chapter 2, 15 to 17. Then we, when we saw the loss of the eyes, the loss of the flesh, and the pride of life, that we must be careful. They dwell in the heart. They don't hang on your shoulder or in your closet in the house. They dwell in your heart. And therefore they form the old altars that are dwelling in your new church because your body is a new church because the bible says you are now a new creature all things are passed away all have become new but if these thoughts that are mentioned dwell in you all have not become new they are just hanging to mess to mess you up in the time you least expected so there will be especially this one that just touched now the love of the world they come in slowly 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 until they take over your whole life. Don't forget, they also manifested during the time of Adam and Eve, the first Adam, that the Bible called first Adam. And they also came to attack as a, as a, as a uh, 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 temptation for the second Adam. We are going to see that quickly before we go into the rounding up of the remaining ones that remain. Now, in the book of um, um, Genesis chapter 3, Genesis 3, we are going to read from verse 1 to 6. And we are going to read also the book of Luke chapter 4, 1 to 14. We are going to do every, every one of these very quickly. I believe we can finish today. And we, got, we are going to say our prayer. We, we have a few prayers to pray as well. Yes? Genesis 3, 1 to 6. And now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field. He said the serpent, yes. yes continue. Which the Lord God had made. Uh-huh. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Mm-hmm. And the woman said to the serpent, mm-hmm. We may eat the fruits of the trees of the garden, mm-hmm. but of the fruits of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you shall not eat, mm-hmm. nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Mm-hmm. Then the serpent said to the woman, mm-hmm. You will not surely die. You will not die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened. Because the Lord knows the day you eat from the fruit, the fruit that they have been warned not to eat. Then the, the devil told them the day you eat from it. The Bible uh, use, uses a snake to represent the devil. It uses it because of the, the attitude, the identity, or the characteristics of a snake to represent. It's not actually saying that it's a snake that says take. Like some people will draw it in the picture. Because you cannot use another adjective for something or someone that, can, that behave in such a way. Very, very skillful, very sleeky, and very dangerous. So it's a serpent. Yes? For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened. Yes. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Yes. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. The woman saw that the fruit was good for what? That the tree for was good food. for food. Yes. That it was pleasant to the eyes. That it was pleasant to the eyes. And a tree desirable to make one wise. And a tree desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruits and ate. She took of the fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. And she also gave convincingly. She would not just... Adam knew the fruit. She wouldn't just get take the fruit and say, take, eat. The, it, she must have convinced Adam and Adam also ate. Amen. Amen. Now... In this place, the devil does not bring the fruit to the house to meet a woman. I want you to understand that. So, the, Adam was warned about this fruit, this tree. And when a- a- Eve was created, and Adam must have also discussed it with Eve. We can eat anything as the husband I have to tell you the rules of this place. But you cannot eat this one. So, the matter was in the heart of, of Eve. Probably anytime she passed around the tree, she would look, why can we not eat here? Why can we not? It didn't happen one day. It was preoccupying our mind, our heart. This tree. This tree. Remember they have, we don't know how many trees they had. But they had many trees in the garden. But this particular one, if we go there, she will go there, she will say, this tree, what is so particular? You know, it was the, even up to now, is the woman that take care of the feeding in the house. So she was also in charge of business of cooking and providing for food for the family. Then she went, she was always looking at this fruit. Why is it that we cannot eat this? So one of these days, she was there, and the devil manifested, why are you looking at this? It's beautiful, don't you see it? 
Now, she must have said yes. But I'm wondering, the Lord said we cannot eat it. Why not? And the devil said, don't mind it. Don't mind the Lord. This one, you will eat it. The Lord knows that the day you eat, you will be able to see the way God sees. Then, that is why he must have said he should not eat it. And what happened? The woman also looked at it. It was not because the devil convinced her, but because she also, after the information of conviction, she looked at it. And the Bible says, she said, this is, will be a sweet one, delicious. That's why it says, it's good for food. This will be delicious. Then the second one, she looked at what? What happened the second time? Pleasant to the eyes. He said, then it was pleasant. Beautiful. Beautiful. Then the third one, then information. I was told that it can make me wise, make my eyes open. You see, whatever we are, human being was created very powerfully by God to have wisdom. But when you see somebody commit a sin, it is not because somebody said you should do it that you committed it. We know somebody will say, when you say you have sinned, say, hey, it was my brother that advised me to do it. It is not your brother. Before you can do it, you yourself, you see that it's good. You see, you will look, it's beautiful. Then you now remember what your brother told you, finally. Then you can do it. I say, yes. I've checked the first two stages, good and beautiful, then I can go for it. But if somebody told you to do something, if you have not seen the thing beautiful, it is not pleasant or pleasant to you, you would not do it. Is that true of us? You will not agree with your brother or your sister's advice. For instance, you go to a fire. Your brother said, put your hand in that fire. It can't burn you. It can never burn you. Then you see the fire, the flame is coming and say, <laughs> you look at the fire and say, no, this is not pleasant. This is not good. Then you turn back. Yeah, your brother said, why don't you put your finger? I said, no, 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 I can't agree with you there. Because this is not good. So there is no any sin you commit, don't seek or uh, 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 any kind of defense to yourself or reasons for you to commit the sin because at the end of the day it is your sin it is you that committed the offense because you have sinned it's pleasant and everything is done from your old altar yeah, that is in the new church old altar in the new church that the Lord has given you victory you have been given victory over sin, but when you commit it a second time, you are committing it yourself. Because you saw and you feel it's still good and beautiful. That's why you always do that. But how, if you begin to see them as poisonous and dangerous, you will not do them anymore. If you begin to see them as what? Poisonous and dangerous, nobody can advise you to do them anymore. But if you continue to see them as beautiful and pleasant to the eyes, you will always do them. You will always find reason to do them. You will always do them. Then Luke 14, Luke 4, sorry. Luke 4, 1 to 14. Luke 4, 1 to 14. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, went, uh, returns from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for for 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing, and afterwards, when they had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Then the devil, taking him all up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of a time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give to you, and their, gra and their glory. For this has been de delivered to me, and I give to you, to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you. And in your hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. 12. And Jesus answered and said to him, It, is, it has been said to you, I mean, it has been, shed, it has been said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now, when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an appointed uh, opportune time. Then Jesus returned to the, 
in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. Amen. 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 Glory Amen. to God. Amen. You see there. Now, you, one would have thought that the devil was standing in front of Jesus and said, let's go. Let's go. Or carry him. Because he said he took him to the pinnacle of the mountain. He didn't carry him. He walked there. All those things was happening on his mind. You know, he fasting for 40 days and he was just walking around in that wilderness. He was just walking around. You know, I imagine when you go for a retreat and you are alone uh, for 40 days, for 21 days, and you are walking around, you are hungry. You don't even know where the food to break the fasting is coming from. You understand? You don't all know where the food to break the fasting is coming from. And you're just wandering around, walking around by yourself. Move from there, go to the mountains on your mind. Go up to that place that you can jump from here. What will happen? You have power now. 40 days. You know, it happened to a human being. You have been praying and fasting for 21 days. You feel that you can move mountains. You can tear anything spiritually. And if you're not careful, you have spiritual arrogance. That will kill what God wants to do. Or God is doing in you. So, if, if the Lord Jesus does not push each of these things. In these trials or temptation out by what? By faith and the word of God. He did what? He pushed everything out of his mind by this word. He would have fallen into one of them. If he admire one of them, if he thought that, wow, it's beautiful to actually be the boss of this world. How, why will he think like that? Because the world was created by him and through him. How can somebody give it to him? Something that was created through him. So that is the way we Christians are supposed to be thinking too. If somebody say, come and do this to make money, you have to think, the money was made by my father, the one I gave my life to. Why will I say to make the money that I've been given? You see that? If somebody asks you to commit adultery, why will I commit adultery? And you use the word of God to push each of this out. We have different meanings to different people. That's why we are diverse in our understanding of the Bible. A lot of people study the Bible from the knowledge of man, from the knowledge of the, uh, uh, of uh, of uh, of uh, doctrine, or even theology. But we must allow God to speak to us through His Word for us to understand how to know it or do it rightly. May the Lord, may the Lord reveal His Word to us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And I read a note to you last week. A note, three notes, three important notes. The first one I said to us. Whatever you do not defeat, we do what? We defeat you. Anything that you refuse to defeat and you ignore or procrastinate. Sometimes we, we see these things, but we ignore them. Sometimes we procrastinate. We just say, oh, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow I'm busy now. Or we just say, we just don't have time to deal with them now. Any act of sin that is always coming to your mind, your heart, constantly... Please, my brothers and sisters, find a way to prayerfully deal with them. Amen. Because that is one of the reasons why prayers are needed. We use prayers for the things that prayers are not needed for. That is why we struggle with the things that we need prayer for. Let me repeat what I said. I said, you, you, you do not pray for the things you need to use prayer to pray for. That is why the things you need prayer to pray for become a trouble to you. Number two, what you fail to destroy, we do what? Destroy. They will not destroy you in Jesus' name. Amen. Anything that you have left oversight or ignore or you are nonchalant about can come up to destroy the owner. One of the examples I will give you is that Judas Iscariot. Some people will tell me that, no, oh, it has been prophesied that he will do that. God could be, Jesus could be defeat, uh, betrayed by any other person outside. He was not necessary to become what? He's one of his disciples. You can see when he was telling them that one of you will betray me. You see, he was not meant to be, but that is what the, what the revelation says. Amen. Amen. So, you see, that has been in Judas Iscariot for a while. The loss of money. And he did not do what? He did not destroy it. Greed and love of money. Greed. Uh, w- there was a woman that decided to, to, to worship the Lord with an alabaster jar, broken of the alabaster jar, and they used the oil to anoint Jesus Christ and all that. And, and Judas was angry. Why should we do things like this? 
We could sell. We could sell. Do you know how much this one costs in the market? You could sell it and use it for charity. It's not about charity. It's about his own, his own post. Because he was, the, he was the treasurer. So he was just willing to just keep that. You see? He was like a thief. Underground in the church, among the brethren. But that thing that he loved most put him to open shame and destroy him forever. Because he did not destroy it. Love for money. Love for gift. If you see a Christian love money, love gifts, they do things, things that they do are motivated by money. If it's not money, they will not be motivated to do it. Then that thing will destroy them one day. Number three, what you do not deal with, we do what? We deal with you. Anything you refuse to deal with that you have noticed in your life, in your marriage, there are many marriages that have, after, can you imagine after 30 years of marriage? They say marriage break. 35 years of marriage. Marriage break. Why? What, are they, what have they been waiting for? In 30 years. What have they been waiting for? To break. They didn't break after 2 weeks. After 6 months. After 6 years. After 10 years. After 16 years. They broke up after 35 years. Why? What have they been waiting for? Because something they refuse to deal with. Death with their marriage. At 35. That thing was always waiting there. They refused to deal with it. Then it dealt with their marriage. After 35. So whenever you see. Things in your mind. Or your husband or wife is saying it to you all the time. Deal with it quickly. Whatever you see. Your mind is thinking about. That is awful. Sinful. That can destroy your life or marriage. Or terminate your life. Deal with it quickly. Before he deals with you. Before he takes your health. Before he takes your leg or any part of your body. Deal with quick quickly. A, one of the things that the child of God must not do is to procrastinate. Or ignore. Because we are spiritual soldiers. Soldiers don't. When the soldier is in, in the battle, battleground, battlefield. When they hear something in the bush. Will they continue to sleep? They will stand up. They want to know what it is before they go and sit down. But the Christian will just say, say now it can be some children throwing stone there. They just give a minute to anything. They don't look into it. To search about it. To see what it is that was making noise there. So we must be very careful. We must not underestimate anything. We must not ignore anything. We must not pay, play, uh, uh, you know, turn a non-channel attitude to anything about our lives. Spiritual or physical. About your marriage, about your children. You're, you have a young child that is misbehaving somewhere, or all saying some bad word, or dancing some bad dance, and you say, hey, they're just children, you're just dancing. Look at the way my child, oh, you're ready, ready, roaming the waist like that. Don't just ignore anything. Because when it gets to some point, that is why you see innocent young lady going to become a strip dancer in the nightclub later. Then when they now become strip dancer, in the in the nightclub, oh. their parents will now begin to cry around, oh. or prostitute, or some other things. So you must not ignore anything about your life and home and children. Pay attention to any how anything you see strange in your life, in your home. You see your child is dodging with a phone, hiding the phone to look at something. You say, oh, they are just children. They are just enjoying themselves with the phone. You have to find out what it is before the thing because before your daughter need the help. From that addiction, from the phone. Before the daughter or your son is killed through somebody that they are speaking to, that they don't know on the phone. It could be a pedophile. It could be anybody. It could be somebody that needs human sacrifice and needs a body and try to deceive somebody to come. You see some, you see some young ladies traveling from one country to the other to go and meet someone they have never known or never met. Because of what? Because... They do not, some parents do not pay attention to their children. Some parents turn on TV to keep their children busy. And they will just go away. They think TV is a way to keep them busy. They don't turn TV and watch anything and keep busy. And they don't care to look at what they are watching. They don't deal with what they are watching. And later, the children begin to deal with them. With the information from what they have been watching. 
We must be careful about this old altar that have come to stay in the new church. Because if you allow them to stay, they will never allow the church to be new. They will not what? They will not allow the church to be new. You will be born again as if you have not been born again. How many people have felt that before? You are born again and you are doubting your salvation yourself. Nobody is saying you are not born again. Well, you yourself, you are doubting it. Say, am I really born again? Because you have seen when the old altar begin to pollute and possess the territory of the old of the new church, you will lose the, the strength about believing that you are born again. Because the things you begin to see around you, you will not be able to comprehend. And you begin to get confused. So what are these things? Why do I why am I born again and still have all these things hanging around my life and my heart? That is because you have permitted the old altar to dwell in the new church. You permitted us to stay in the new church. Now, we want to go into our, into rounding up the message. And I want us to see three important things. The word, important watch word. To helping us rebuild our heart. Transform our lives. It's very important you listen to this. I have spoken since last week about the problem of the old altar in the new church. And this is how to discover. Because you cannot recover except you have discovered that you lost something. Is that true or false? Yeah. You need to discover and agree with the fact that something is missing. Then you go to recover that which is missing. Say, number one says, whoever you, uh, sorry, whoever you obey has become your master. You are master to anything you obey. You are master to what? Anything. To whatever you obey. And obedience is done from the heart. See, you first of all obey from your heart before you stand up to do what you are asked to do. If I ask you, I say, get me a cup, a cup of water. Then your, your mind receives the information. And your heart says, this is my father that has me to go and get water. Then you do what? You stand up and get it. So, you are led by every information. You are a slave of information you have in your heart. Because you obey from your mind. Anyone you obey, you are their slave because you obey them from your heart. In the book of Romans, Romans chapter 6, we are going to see from verse uh, uh, from 6 to 16, and we're going to see 17 and 18 differently. 6 to 17, uh, 6 to uh, chapter verses 6 to 16. Yes. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him. You must know that your old man was crucified with God, with Christ. That the body of sin might, might be done away with. So that you were crucified with Christ, so that you can do away. You can destroy the body of sin, yes? That we should no longer be slaves of sin. And you destroy the body of sin so that you can no longer be what? Slaves. Now, when you saying the body of sin to human being, it is true that you have, I have, not destroyed, I have not destroyed this body. Then what is he talking about? He's talking about my heart. He's talking about what? My heart. When the Bible says your body destroy the sinful body. He's not saying that you go and put kerosene and fire on your body. He's talking about your heart. You are a spirit that have a soul. You live in this content that is called a body. And so when the Bible says destroy the sinful body, it's talking about destroying sin from your mind, from your heart. Because your heart is controlled, I mean, your body is controlled by the contents of your heart. Everything you have in your heart controls your body daily. Every information or program you might have in your mind, they are the ones you do during the day. Some of you are here online today because you had on your mind yesterday night in your heart that you have to be part of the meeting today. That is why you have joined, that is why you are here. You see, so that is why God also deals with your heart. That is in the New Testament gospel, the Lord deals with your heart. The Lord deals with your heart. Amen. Amen. Yes, continue. For he, for he who has died has been freed from sin. You see, anyone whose heart or conscious, their heart is dead to sin, they have been free from sin. Yeah. Look, at it's very simple arithmetic. If my heart is being killed to sin, in other words, if I have Fought sin from my heart. Say, sin, you will not stay in my heart. Whenever they come, the sinful thoughts come. It's not that they will not come. Yeah. But don't allow them to stay. Say, I command you. You speak to yourself. Sometimes some people, some people might tell you, what are you saying? Are you speaking to yourself? Say, no, I'm not speaking to myself. I'm speaking to the evil thought in me. I command you in the name of Jesus. 
You can speak even the word of God against it, just like Christ did. And you destroy them. Each time they come, you say that. It, don't entertain it. If you entertain it, it will stay. And when it stays, you are in trouble. Yes, continue. Verse 8. Now, if we die with Christ, if we die with Christ, we believe that we also will live with him. You see that if our heart is renewed in Christ, we also believe that we will also live with him. Yes. Knowing that Christ, has, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Knowing that Christ, when he was raised from the dead, he, didn't die, he, he does not have to die anymore. Death no longer has dominion over him. Yes. For the death that he died. The death he died. He died to sin once for he all. He died to sin once. But the life he lives. The life he lives. He lives to God. He lives to God. Likewise, you also. The same way you have to be also as Christians. Reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin. He said you must imagine imagine understand that you are also dead the day you gave your life to jesus that your heart if you want to be dead in the body you must understand your heart must be dead to sin how can it be died by you killing it every time you are the killer of the of the sin of the heart you shoot it whenever it comes you shoot it whenever it comes then it will be dead and your body will become to be holy it's just a simple arithmetic if you contain them in your heart if they stay there you become a sinner on the body if they die, you become holy in the body. Because heart of the content of your heart, the mouth speaketh, and your body begin to live. Yes? But alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. You are alive to Christ in Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes? Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body. Therefore do not permit sin to reign in your heart. That you should obey. And in your body that you should obey. That you should obey it in its loss. In its loss, yes. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness do to sin. Do not present members of your body. Your hands, your eyes, your ears, your leg, your body to the instrument of what? All righteousness to sin. But present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead. But present yourself to God as being... You, even though you are living, but you are dead to sin. And this can only happen if your heart dies first. Before you begin to apply to the body. If your heart is alive to sin, your body cannot be dead to sin. It's impossible. Because your heart is the content of whatever thing that controls your body. That is why I do not believe some Christians that live somehow and they said salvation is from the heart. I have been born again from my heart. I'm a new creature. And yet you see them behaving differently. I don't believe they are born again. Even though they think their heart is sanctified. Because I am of one of the believers that whatever happens to your heart, it must happen to your body. Amen. Amen. Am I wrong, somebody? No. Whatever happened to your heart, it must be shown on your body. Because whatever I do on my body, I am convinced from the heart that that is the right way. That is why my body does them. Amen. 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 Because everything you do in the body, they are, they are from the heart. They are from the heart. When you love something, it's from your heart. When you hate something, it's from your heart. When you want to go somewhere, it's from your heart. When you don't want to go, it's from your heart. You see? So therefore, activities happen in your mind and your heart before they come to your body. That is the reason why you must be born again from the heart. Can you read 17 and 16? Have you read up to 16? Yes, read it to 16. And your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Yes. 14. For sin shall, no, shall not have dominion over you. You see you, that? If you understand this process of sanctifying, sanctifying yourself, that God asking God to sanctify you through your spirit and your heart, sin will no longer have what? Dominion over your body. Because see, if, look at a simple illustration. I want everybody here to look at me. And people online might, not, might be looking at me through their screen. Now, what I'm trying to say is that if I have, if I am living in God, if God is, if God was visible, eh? if this house I'm standing, sitting in is, is God and I'm sitting inside God, listen, look at me, and somebody is fighting me from the outside the building, will that arrow reach me? Will it reach me? No. It will not reach me because I'm inside. They will only be shooting it towards the walls. It will not get to me. So the same thing is sin. If my inside is protected, 
Can the, can the devil manipulate from my outside to make me sin? It is not possible from the outside because I am inside. So for some people that do something that say it's the devil, is it the devil? It's not the devil. The devil only give advice to your mind. You have the right to say no or yes. If and Adam, Adam and Eve had the right to say no, but they say what? They say yes. Jesus had the right to say yes to the proposal, but he said no. So also we, sin always comes as advice. Then you have the right to say yes or no. But if you have seated in your in, the, in God, according to Colossians chapter one, uh, Colossians chapter three, verse three, he said, "If you are now a new believer, you are what you are hidden in Christ Jesus in the Lord." That is, if you understand salvation, it's only those who understand salvation that have a dominion over sin. Yes, continue. For uh, fourteen, mm-hmm. for sin shall not have dominion over you. Sin will not have dominion over you. For you are not under law, but you, under grace. You are not under law, but under grace. What then shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? Now, what it says, you are not under law and under grace. That also I need to speak about because some people are getting confused about that. Under law means I am governed and controlled by the law, do's and don'ts. But for one, for some group of people, they are under the grace. The grace is talking about the, the grace of Jesus Christ that came to die and use his blood as the atonement for our sin. Not only that, that we also receive, according to Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30. We also come to him with all our load and baggages of sin and he take them all from us and he gave us his ways of life. You don't hand over your baggage without learning. You have to learn. Otherwise, salvation is not completed. It's not in my way, but I, have, I think I have to read this because of this verse. Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30. Somebody read it for me. Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30. Quickly, quickly. We are almost done now. Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30. Come, come to me. Come to me. All you who labor and are heavy laden. All who labor and heavy laden. And I will give you rest. That was Jesus Christ speaking there. Call of salvation or call to salvation. And I will give you what? Rest. Rest. Or to your mind, yes? Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Now look at this. He said, you can bring all your baggage to me, but you must take my whole yoke. Yoke is not, is not pressure. It's not bitterness. It's not sorrow. Yoke, I have explained this before. Yoke in English means a, 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 a kind of uh, mechanical agricultural tool that was used in those days. This is a metal. It's an iron. You use it to brace two cows to work together. If you check a, a yoke, what it means. So yoking together means you have to behave like me. When I turn left, you turn left. When I turn right, you turn right. When I go, you go. When you stop, you stop. Because we are joined together. We are hooked together by the yoke that is hung around two animals. You know, if you, if you, if you, if you check the channel, you see two animals walking together. And something is around their neck, the two of the animals. And you use them on the farm. So that thing on their neck is called yoke. So which means because of that thing that is put on the two animals... On the farmland, they, they have to work together. When the farmer push something, the two of them move. When they pull the brake, they stop. When they bend the yoke, they bend. Two of them bend. When they bend to the left, they bend to the left. When they bend to the right, they bend to the right. That is why Jesus chose that agricultural language cleanly to demonstrate how Christians must be when they come to him. He said, if you have come to me, then you must be yoked with me. In other words, you must behave like me. The things I do. The things I say, where I go, where I don't like to go, and what I believe, what I don't believe in, that is what you must do if you have come to me. Yes? And learn from me. Learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in I am heart. gentle and lowly. He began to explain what it means. He said you must learn from me. That's what yoke means. Because I am gentle and lowly from the heart. From where? The heart. Can you see that? Go back. Reverse. Take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you. And learn from me. And learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. I am gentle and lowly in body. No. Eh? In heart. I am gentle and lowly from the heart, not from the body. So the gentleness is not what you see. The gentleness is what is in me. And that has produced on the outside. You see? The calmness. The good character is not of me, but it started from what? From my spirit. The love 
It's not on my body, but it's in my spirit. It's in my heart. Yes? And you will find rest for your soul. And you will, once you have that in your heart, you'll be able to find rest for your soul. That is why many Christians don't have rest. They go from one deliverance meeting to another deliverance meeting. They go from one crusade to another crusade. And yet they have Jesus. Because they do not have Christ in their heart. They do not believe from the Spirit. Can you read verse 16 and 17 and 18 now? Uh, have you finished that Romans? Yeah. Uh, 17 and 18. You've done 16? No. 16, 17, 18. Yes. Do you not know? Do you not know? That to whom you present yourself slaves to obey. Anyone you present yourself to obey, a sl- uh, uh, you are a slave of them. You are that one slave whom yeah. you obey. Yes. Whether of sin leading to death. If you obey sin, then you are a slave of sin. Yes. Or of obedience leading to righteousness. If you obey, if you become obedient, you are a slave of obedience to righteousness. But it, what he's saying is that if I obey sin, I become a sinner. If I am obedient, I become a righteous. So when you see somebody that's a righteous, he's a believer. When you see somebody that says, I'm a believer, they are not righteous, they are not what? They are not believers. I didn't say that. The Bible says that. But in this our days, we are taught things that make us relaxed and comfortable in sin. That is what the church teaches us. Things that make us not to seek to repent. Do you know the reason that Christians don't seek to repent these days because of the messages ministers of God are preaching? They don't seek repentance. It's not like the days of apostles when they sought repentance. Because we are telling people that it doesn't matter what you do once you confess Jesus Christ, you are a new creation. That is not correct. People will not seek their new repentance if you teach them like that. Here he's saying that if you obey, then you become righteous. It's a 2 plus 2 equal to 4. It's not equal to 3. Now if you disobey, you become what? Sinner. 3 plus 3 is 6. It's not 5. That is simple. So if you now see somebody that confessed Christ living in, is not righteous, is not holy, what does that tell you? He's not born again. He has information. There is a difference between having information and being born again. And that is why the that part of the Bible in the book of Romans in, in chapter 10 says, if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you see, the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, you are what? You shall, you shall, you shall. He didn't say you are saved. Did he say you are saved? He said, you shall be saved. Because that is the good information you need. It is the foundational information for anybody that will save, that will be saved. So once you have that information, it's good. But you are not, but you have to use it. So once you believe at the law and confess him, you have received what the right information to be born again. But you must pursue it all the way. You must do what? Pursue it all the way. In the book of four, uh, John, also chapter 1, verse uh, 11 and 12, he said, He came unto his own, and his, aim did not, his own did not receive him. But unto those who receive him, he gave what? The power to become. Look at that English. Power to become. If I gave you power to travel, if you don't travel, do you have the power? You have it, but you have not traveled. Because the purpose of the power is what? It's to travel. It's not to remain in the house. So if you have information, if you have information to be born again, listen to me. I have information to be born again. I understand it. I receive it. But I'm not born again. I'm living in sin. Am I born again? I just have information. Information is good. But you must utilize the information to achieve the purpose of the information. That is when you are saved. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Then the last one, uh, have you read 17 and 18 there? No. Okay, please do. But God be thanked. But God be thanked. That though you were slaves of sin. Even though you used to be slave of sin. Yet you obey from the heart. Now you begin to obey from where? The heart. The heart. From where? The heart. The heart. From where? The heart. the heart. From the body? No. From the ears? No. From the mouth? No. From where? The heart. From the, you obey from the heart. When your heart as not look at look at the way it works. My heart says I don't believe in that, but my hearing is saying it's common sense. It's common sense. It's okay. Then I sit there in the church, even though my heart does not agree what I'm hearing, but I just say it's okay. It's okay. It's common sense. Am I really in that? Will I be able to do that thing? 
I would not be able to do it. It is what your heart has convinced, is convinced about, is what you do. There are many people that sit down in the church today. Their heart is not convinced that they, they have to totally repent. Some people have not come to agree that, ah, it's been enough, it's enough. I've been a Christian for some while. For a while, I need to repent today. They are, it has not happened to their heart like that. They never thought about that. It's not, it doesn't trouble their mind to sin. That is why you see Christians still drink beer. You see Christians still commit adultery. Christians still commit, for, uh, perform, uh, uh, commit sin of fornication. You see Christians in many immoral acts. Sexual immorality. Many other immorality. Christians don't feel challenged to put on what belongs to unbelievers to show their body and their breast. And every part of their body. They don't care because it has never happened to their heart that it's, it's sinful. If you have not received information in your heart, that's why Jesus Christ said himself in Matthew 11, in verse, 20, that verse 29. If you have not received in your heart, convinced from your heart, you can never do on the outside. It can never happen on your body. It is the information you are convinced with from your heart that you actually do on the body. Because the issues of your heart controls the body. Body is just ordinary, it's just like a car. We, we, all, we have all seen car, isn't it? We have all seen car. Yeah. Now, the car is just, you see the body beautiful. But if the engine is not started, and you begin to accelerate, you begin to press your leg on the accelerator, the car does not move, no matter how beautiful. Is that true or false? You have your mobile phone. Beautiful on its own. If you have not set them into motion to call, would they call by themselves? They don't. You see a bicycle. It could be beautiful. If you have not climbed on the bicycle and begin to propel the bicycle, does it move by itself? It doesn't. That is the way we are. Our body is beautiful to be seen. But if your heart does not control it, it doesn't do anything. So you must understand that as a Christian. Whatever you do in your body comes from your heart. So if you tell me, don't worry about what I did, I'm not that on the inside, I will not believe you. Because it cannot happen magically. It is what you have on your inside that you are saying now to me. Your action shows your heart. And that is the reason why there must be complete salvation. The Bible says here you must believe from where? From your heart. From your heart you believe. From your heart you must repent. Read that again. 17. Mm -hmm. But God be thanked mm -hmm. that though you were slaves of sin, mm -hmm. you yet, I mean, yet you obey from the heart mm -hmm. that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. Obedience from the heart. heart. You see that? So that is the watchword. If you want to chase or remove the old order from your heart, from your new church, you must obey, begin to obey from the heart. heart. You must begin to obey from the heart, heart and send sin out of your Heart. Speak against sin every time they come to you. When they happen to your heart, you say, you command the sin to live with the word of God. In what, any aspect they came to you. Number two, we have only three of them and we close. Number two, you must be aware that you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve two masters. You must not and you cannot. Matthew 6.24 says, a man cannot serve two masters. Matthew 6.24, what does it say? No one can serve two masters. No one can serve two masters and satisfy two of them. Yes? For either he will hate the one and love the other. It's either you hate one or you love the other. Or else you will be loyal to the one and despise the other. Or you are loyal to one and despise the other. You see, you cannot be holy and uh, unholy at the same time. You cannot be righteous and sinner at the same time. You cannot be godly and worldly at the same time. It's either you choose one and do what? And love the other. In the book of James, in the book of James, can you see James 4, 4, what does it say? It's not in my way, it just came to my mind. James 4, verse 4, what does it say? James 4, 4. Adulter adulterers and adulteresses. Adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that the friendship with the world is enmity with God? Don't you know that the friends with the world is enmity to God? 
Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Anyone that wants to be a friend of the world is equally an enemy of God. God. You see that? You can't serve two people. You can't serve God and the world. If you love the world so much, then you will hate what? God. God. It is only one person that is supposed to love the world. Who is it? God. God. For God so loved the world that he did what? He gave his only because But his own love is for... To transform the world. To save the world from darkness. But our own kind of love of the world is different. Our own what? Our own is to acquire the world. The wealth. The blessing. Regardless of anything that it costs. To get everything in the world to satisfy our lust. That is why the Bible says we must not love the world. That does not mean that you cannot love your brothers and sisters. But not lustfully. Not in sin. Amen. 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 Number three, the last one. It says, except you die to the flesh. That is the heart. When the Bible says die to the flesh, it's talking about your heart. Because you cannot crucify your body. You cannot die physically. So, except you die from your heart, you can never be alive to God in righteousness. Say that to somebody. Except you die from the heart, you you will never be alive to God in righteousness. I said, say it properly as you mean it. Are you dodging? Maybe you are not living righteous. Yeah. Say it. Yeah. Unless, unless you die, die to, from the heart. Unless you die, die to the flesh of the heart, heart you, you cannot be alive to God in righteousness. Go to righteousness. Unless you die from your heart, you cannot live physically in God in righteousness. It is impossible. Because it's the content of the heart that controls or governs the body. So you can never be righteous. That is why some people also say something that you know nobody can be righteous i've had how many people have heard that before some christians also believe that they say nobody can be holy nobody can be righteous because that is not the word of god people say to somebody that is not the word of god, that is not the word of god. if you have ever heard say that if you have ever heard that nobody is holy and nobody is holy. and nobody can be and no one can be have you ever heard Nobody can be righteous. No one can be. Righteous. No one can be. And no one can be. It's not the word of God. It's not the word of God. Because the word of God says, because the word of God says you must be righteous. You must be righteous as your father in heaven. As your father in heaven. And you must be holy. And you must be holy. As your father in heaven is holy. As your father in heaven is holy. So where do we get what you are talking about? That is not the word of God. That is not what? It's the word of man. Just like my brother-in-law was quoting Bible one day. My, my wife's brother, I was speaking to him about Jesus. Then he says, the Bible says, was it you or, or me? Okay, I was there that day. And you, okay, all right. I, I, I don't know whether you told me I was there. And he was saying, yeah, I was there. He was speaking on the speak out. And he said, the heaven says, uh, uh, the Bible says, heaven help those who help themselves. I said, eh? Where is that in the Bible? The heaven says, Heaven help those who help themselves. Say the Bible say that. The Bible says, Heaven help those who help themselves. I said, My brother in law, where is that in the Bible? He was laughing. I said, That is not, don't let, because some people hear some phrases that people quote in the church that is not biblical. Don't be used to them. Don't be do what? Don't be used to them. Please, I beg you in the name of Jesus. When you see some biblical quotes that is not in the Bible, because there are people that form many biblical quotes that is not in the Bible, don't be used to them. One of them is no one can be holy. No one, another one is nobody can be righteous. They are human quotes, not biblical quotes. Another one from my written, especially by my brother in law, is heaven help those who help themselves. That is not the quote from God. Don't quote the philosophers, don't quote the theologians. You must always believe and quote the Bible as Christians. You cannot use the world to govern your life. We may be living in the world, but we are not of the world. You see that? Don't use the quotation of the world to govern your marriage, your life, your home, your children. They cannot work. Because we belong to God. You cannot use the things of the world to govern the things that belong to God. It won't work out. It will cause trouble. So we must believe that holiness is of God and He wants us to be. We must believe that righteousness is of God I want to be. I may not be now, but I want to be. Because I believe I can be. Is that, do you understand that? I am not holy now. 
but I want to be because I believe from my heart that I have to be. Then it will give me what? Motivation to be and to become in the hand. But guess if I don't believe in it, that I believe only in there is nobody that is righteous. What do you think I will end up being? I will end up being unrighteous and probably go to hell. God, will, God forbid that. So whatever you believe is what you become. Because what you believe dwell in your heart and you become what you have in your heart. Say to somebody, what you have in your heart is what you become. What you see from your heart of your life is what you become. What you see from your heart. So you better begin to see the right thing from your heart about yourself. You better begin to see the right thing. Say that to them clearly. You better begin to see the right thing from your heart of yourself. Amen. Amen. Let's read two Bible passages and we we'll close. John chapter 12, 23 to 26, and 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 36. John, John 12, 23 to 26. 23 to 26, yes. But Jesus answered them, saying, Yes. The hour has come. The hour has come. And the Son of Man should be glorified. Yes. Most assuredly I say to you, uh-huh. unless a grain of wheat. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies. Falls into the ground and dies. It remains alone. It will stay. It will still remain the same. But if it dies. If it dies. It produces more, much grain. It becomes new to produce more grain. Yes. He who loves his life will lose it. He will love the life of the old altar. Anyone that loves old altar will do what? Will lose mm-hmm. the new life. Yes. And he who hates his life. In this world will keep it for eternal life. Anyone that hates the whole altar will regain his word here on earth and also in in heaven. Yes. If anyone serves me, yes, let him follow me. Yes. And where I am, uh-huh. there my servant will be also. Where I am, my servant will be also. Yes. If anyone serves me, if anyone serves me, him my father will honor. He my father will honor. honor. Anyone serves me, my father will honor. honor. Can you see that? He said, Most assuredly, I said to you, unless a grain falls to the ground and die, it cannot live to bring new, to be fruitful. Except you become, you have been wondering why you are not fruitful in Christ. You have to die, your heart must be dead to sin. If your heart is not dead to the whole altar, your new church will not be fruitful, will not be resourceful, will not be profitable. They must die before the new one begins to come out. They have to die because information of the past, behavior of the past, character of the past, things you love to do in the past when you are in the world, they must be dealt with with prayers to be out of your thoughts. Then you begin to make new information that will make you profitable and resourceful and profitable to the kingdom of God. Except they are dead, you cannot see the new things coming. You will not see yourself loving God. No matter how you struggle to love God physically, you cannot be if your heart does not. Huh? It's just like somebody that they call in, in Africa, in my part of Africa, they call something uh, Yawosara. Which means somebody that is married by, by plot, by plan, and given to him free. You know, they gave a wife free. You, don't, you have never met this woman. You have never, you probably must have, maybe you have never met her. It could be somebody you have seen before, but you never love her. You never seen her. You never talk to her. And all of a sudden, you wake up one morning and you see the woman by your bed and they drop there by somebody that opened your door. And you say, What is this? Say, That's your wife. That's your new wife. They say, Why? Some people fought, they fought for it. They say, I will not marry this person. And the woman will say, I will not marry this man. How can I marry this man? I don't even love him. Then they force them, they force them, they force them until because they have some law, ridiculous law that enforces these people to marry whoever they bring to them. So in their heart they don't love, but in their body they begin to act love. So you see, things will not work in the marriage. If your heart is not in love, your body is in love because you need something. There are people that get married like this, their heart is not in love. But their body wants need. Money needs to be met. And they see they're not living in love. They don't even know. And they've seen that. I don't even know. He doesn't even believe, behave like if he loved me. She doesn't even behave like if she loved me. I don't even know whether he or she loved me or not. Because the body might want, the heart might not in be in love. You see that? 
So these are the things that happen in our, in our world. That is the reason why people don't love God, even though their body wants to. Because their heart did not receive the message to love. Their heart only received the message to receive from God. Blessing, deliverance, victory. So their body loves to receive, but their heart does not love to change, to repent, amen, God. So we have a bunch of people like this in the church. They came to God as Yahweh Sarah. And they did not fall in love with God from the heart. They only came to God because of some situation and conditions. And they want to just travel along. And they see that the love is not smooth. The relationship is not good. Sometimes you are lost. You don't know whether you are in Christ or not. Because you have not discovered the love for God before you jump into the river of salvation. And you find yourself there as someone that has been doing the cover your eye to bring you there. Because you went to a program, somebody preached about deliverance or healing. Or about some blessings or some other things and you wanted and you confessed Christ through that. Or somebody just preached something that has nothing to do with salvation at all. If you know this, you, if you turn your TV, you'll see something I'm talking about. Some people will talk about different topics entirely. And they will say, if you have not given your Jesus Christ, your life to Jesus Christ in your life. I want to lead you. I will not close this program until I lead somebody to Christ. Can you repeat after me, Lord Jesus? Then what have you preached to them to receive Jesus? Now, if I preach about financial breakthrough, then I'm leading Jesus people to Jesus through financial breakthrough. What kind of believer am I raising? Can you guess that? The believer that loves money. The believer that loves God to give them money and breakthrough. People that do not know the mind and the heart of God. They do not have Jesus' love in their heart. They are not sold out to Jesus' love. They are just sold to, his, to their needs. Today you are going to pray. As I have come to the end of the message. We will not have time to read 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 15 verse 36. You can read it by yourself. 1 Corinthians 15 36. But we are going to pray right now. For the remaining time you have. And you will pray this prayer seriously. There are only seven. But I want you to pray them. I want to spend only a few minutes. If God permits, I want to use one minute per prayer so that we can stop exactly seven minutes. And I will pray another one minute and we close. Are we ready? We're ready. Every old every old temple of sin. Every old temple of sin. And unrighteousness. And unrighteousness. In my new church. In my new church. My new body. My new, my new life. My new life. Jump out by fire. In the name of Jesus. Ye ma akan zai 